finalists, comeback player, American League. That's a fastball called strike three, and Tyler Glass now finishes with six straight strikeouts and ties his career high with 14. Brown trying to push him across that first strikeout, 3-2. There it is! Save that baseball. He drills one, deep in the air to right field. Ryan O'Hearn has tied the score! There you go, your AL Comeback Player of the Year finalist, Tyler Glass now, Liam Hendricks. And Ryan O'Hearn. Okay. In the American League, it's interesting because you have two guys that you're mostly looking at with like your basic injuries and stats. And then, of course, Liam coming back from cancer. So your winner of the American League Comeback Player of the Year Award is Adam. Of course, Liam Hendricks. I mean, you're staring. This is bigger than the game. You're staring. You know, this is life and death. And, uh, you know, we're a close-knit family in baseball. And uh, it's it's a lot bigger than the game, you know, for him to be able to come back and throw a major league pitch. That's icing on the cake for him to be around for his family. That's what it's most about. So uh, the guys O'Hearn, fantastic year. Again, change of scenery guy and glass now coming back from TJ. He's still filthy. But uh, I think everybody can agree that, you know, life and death overshadows any of this. Love this. Look at the artwork on the Liam Hendricks <laughs> card with the digital signature closer for the Chicago White Sox and dealt with some other injuries, obviously Tommy John surgery, which we'll get into with him. So let's do that right now. Liam Hendricks chatting it up with myself, Perzinski and Eric Kratz on winning the award. Liam, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on winning AL comeback player of the year and congratulations on the comeback quest, right? And I know you're going through it again with, with an injury rehab, but not the same here. The storyline is incredible. And now that you have an off season to look back at what just happened over the past year, what do you talk about with your family? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't exactly the year we drew up. Um, starting off with the, uh, the diagnosis wasn't ideal. But, you know, it, it, you look back on it and like when I was going through it, I was like, okay, it's a six week, I'm missing six to eight weeks of the season, it's not that big of a deal. People have missed more time. I'm coming back and not thinking of it as, a, as a big of a deal. But as we went on, like I started doing uh, group visits with uh, current cancer patients or people who just got over or people who just got diagnosed. And I mean, the impact that it had on a lot of those people was huge. The impact it had on just people going through the same sort of battles. It's, uh, it, it meant a lot more than just baseball. It meant a lot more than just missing two months of the season. It um, looking back on it now, you can really kind of see the gravity of what 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 was going on and um, coming back from it. I think it's uh, it's one thing that I'm really really proud of. How have you changed in the last year since the diagnosis and since you know where you are at today? Uh, well, today, I mean, once I got back from the, the treatment stuff like that, I gained about 45 pounds, so uh, I had to cut that back off because um, yeah, you've seen me at my I think my biggest as well, I think, but. Uh, yeah, it's um, that was one of the big things. But now it's just it's it's more of the just the look on life. Um, you put up with less. <laughs> I mean, it's um, you know, you're in a clubhouse. You've got guys that are differing things. You just you just walk away a little bit more than uh, when you used to kind of get into it a little bit more. Like as a that that witty banter going back and forth. And now it's just a, you know what? I I don't really feel like doing this today. And you walk away. But um, other than that, you look at it and. Look, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of people that are going through a lot worse things. So I don't really want to change my mindset too much. Um, just it's now giving back as much as I can. And now I've got a really focused group to do that with. So this award is voted on by your peers, right? I imagine that you came across quite a few uh, people that you played against over the past season that said things to you. So what kind of comments and praise did you get from people around the sport like is there anything that stands out a conversation or just a consensus of what you'd hear aside from just hey it's incredible awesome to have you back yeah i mean that was mainly the consensus it was just like hey how you doing like how's everything going is it all looking good um and then a lot of people it was oh my sister my brother my parents my grandparents my 
But it, like so many people have gone through something similar to this that it's insane. It's it's unbelievable the the like the amount of people that go through something similar, and having that common bond between people and between now different players on the on the teams and stuff like that. It's uh, it's it's pretty special. But being elect like well, being awarded this from the from the group of players is is a huge deal. Uh, it I didn't quite think I was as deserving with only being um, active for a little part of it, but I think that's what as we go back to it's it's bigger than the game and now it's now i get a chance to kind of lean on guys i mean i'm talking to people that my doctors work with now just to make sure that they're in the right headspace they're doing the right things and making sure that uh, they've got the most positive attitude going towards us as well liam what, what did it mean when you got to take the field again i mean obviously me being a white Sox fan and a white Sox person uh when you took the field it was a special moment that day so can you walk us through coming back and then when you get to take the field and you get to pitch for the first time? Yeah, that was, uh, that was a special, special thing. Uh, the, I think the most special thing was what both the Angels and the White Sox did, where they didn't go to commercial break. Um, they focused on me as I was walking out to the bullpen. And that was one thing that was really unexpected, but I really appreciate the sentiment because it gave a lot of people around the world, around the country, around the world to be able to look in and, and see kind of the gravity of what we're going through. They had, uh, that a group from the Weish Foundation up there with Team Liam signs right behind the bullpen. They uh, they gave me the, the opportunity to kind of soak it in and get on the mound and and really kind of accept what's what's going on. And that was something that uh, I'll always be forever grateful for. But that was one of the coolest experiences, um, being able to come back in and a night game, the light show, the music, the crowd. It was it was an extremely emotional time and. Uh, I just want to thank everybody that was involved in, in the preparation and the fans for coming out and anyone who's come up to me and said, oh, look, I was at that game. I bought the shirt. I mean, anything going towards cancer research is, uh, is, is such a huge thing for me. Is this a full 360 for you? Because you, you and Chrissy, you guys were so involved with different <laughs> charities. Is it a 360 turn to like, hey, this is what we want to focus our time on from here on out? No, no. We've still focused on a lot of different things. We did, uh, I think – close to 35 activations throughout the city of Chicago this year, whether it be first responders, whether it be in the LGBT community, whether it be for animal rescue. Um, we've, we've not really uh, focused out only on cancer, only on cancer stuff, but that was what I did at the field. Like every single road trip series, I'd have some, I'd have someone come out and I get a chance to sit there and meet with them and, and hang out. And I, I was usually hanging out with them for an hour or so and just talking, seeing how they're doing, what their side effects were from treatment how their attitude's going now and, and what was the thing that really got them through. And it's, uh, you see it really kind of just the weight ebb off people when you start talking about it a little bit more. It's not just, oh, great, I'm, I'm happy to meet you, glad you could come out. No, you have these conversations about like, okay, what did you enjoy? What are you doing now? How's, hey, I got really, I got really nauseous, so I had to eat a lot, which went, which meant I gained a lot of weight. How was your side effects from treatment? What was your worst thing? Did you ever get bone pain? I feel like, one thing I got was a little bit of bone pain, and then they said Claritin was the best thing to take for that, which is a random thing. But just the little experiences and stuff like that was uh, was probably the biggest thing for me. But no, we haven't really uh, stopped focusing on what we, uh, we've we always focused on, and that's just making the community a better place. And Kratz, by the way, I mean, not to be that guy, but I think you mean 180 instead no, of he was He really does. See, he said I, – I knew exactly what his answer was going to be. He's going to go 360 and continue in the same direction. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He does all out. twice. Twice. Yeah, he goes He goes all out now. He does go all out. So actually, I meant 180, it, mate. Yeah, 180. <laughs> you know, yeah, just for the internet Australia. trolls that, you know, try and make fun of Kratz's math. Not that he like cares that. that much. But, Liam, actually on that topic of going all out, you actually do have a chance to win this award in back-to-back -back years because – you came back, but unfortunately, since you got hurt, crazy, right? Think about it. Like, you could come back and storm through the league and win this award again for the stats and what you put together on the field, too. So how is your progress on that front? And I'm sure that comeback player of the year is not the first thing on your mind, but how nice would it be if you look at next year and you're like, all right, let's go. Two and a half ERA. Let me lock down 40 saves. Yeah, I don't know if there's ever been a two-time comeback player of the year. <laughs> um, uh, it's it's definitely something that crossed my mind when I uh, when I found out about this one, but I'm like, hey, you know, let's, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. But uh, 
Look, I just want to get back to playing, and that's all I really care about. Look, it's it's great to be honored, uh, especially by the players. Uh, but my goal is to be on the mound. My goal is to help whichever team, whichever wherever I'm at, win, and that's uh, that's all I can really do. And and now being in a bullpen with a guy like Brian Shaw, I need to make sure that I have bragging rights and beat his um, games like appearances one year, just so I can have those bragging rights. Like, have you had a change in like? Hey, how long do I want to pitch for? How long do I want to play for? Now that you got a new, now that you got a new Brasso, you got a new arm. Is that changed it? The goal was always till forty, uh, but now I mean I've got a brand new arm. I'm thirty four years old. I got a brand new elbow that's been pretty much degrading for the last ten years, and uh, now I get an opportunity to pitch with a new one, which will be. Pretty exciting, I think. I don't know. I've never, <laughs> I, I don't know if I need to re tear it again to make sure I get back to where I was. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I mean, that's uh, <laughs> the goal is now to pitch till I'm 40. Uh, that's another six or so years, depending on how um, the Olympics go and stuff like that. That's something I really am interested in is, uh, is representing my country at the Olympics. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Obviously, there's the 28 in LA, there's the 32 in, uh, in Brisbane. So if I can convince the IO or the Australian IOC to uh, put the uh, put baseball in the Olympics in thirty two, I'll have to stick stick around and play till then. Uh, Liam, we appreciate the time, dude. Uh, most importantly, congratulations on you personally coming back from obviously just one of the shittiest parts of life that that so many of us are affected by um, with family, friends, etc. And thanks for being such a great voice now for the sport on this very important topic. Um, fuck cancer. And uh, we'll talk to you later in the off season. All right, dude. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you guys having me. Uh, one last thing I just want to say, and I always say it is if you know anybody who's struggling, whether it be through a cancer diagnosis or health or uh, uh, kind of depression or anxiety or any sort of ailment, please reach out. Those text messages that we get, those are the things that could make us like that bright spot of that day. That could be that turnaround that we need to make sure that we're in the right headspace. And, and for those people going through things, reach out to people. Don't be afraid to talk to a therapist. Don't be afraid to talk to family and friends and just explain what's going on because you know what? They will respect you. They will be able to ask questions and you will be able to get through this as, as a part of a community. And that's something that we, I feel like really need to do is uh, just reach out to those people who, who you think is struggling a little bit and, it, it definitely, it's not annoying. It definitely means the world to us. Yeah, well said. It sounds simple, but it's its a necessary reminder. So you're the man, Liam. Appreciate you, man. Enjoy the off season, all right? Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me.